unto whom the Lord imputed not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silent, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night they had they, thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into a drought of summer. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my inequity have I not hid. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the inequity of my sin. For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eye. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule, which have not which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bits and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusts in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy all ye that are upright in heart. I've read Psalms 32 in its entirety. May God bless the readers, the doers, and the hearers of His most holy word.
thank you, Lord, for who you are and what you are and what you've been in our life. We thank you, Lord, for being a holy God. We thank you, Lord, for being the keeper of our soul. We thank you, Lord, for being our peace, giving us joy, a long-suffering God, a patient God, a temperance God, a loving God. So we just want to say thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you, Lord, for your darling son, Jesus. Who suffered, bread, and died on the cross, Father God, that we may have a right to the tree of life. So, Lord, as we come before you this morning, this day and this morning, we thank you, Lord, that we are able, Father God, to come to this worship experience and that we leave all our problems, all our cares, all our troubles behind. And then we concentrate on you and you alone. So fill us with your Holy Spirit right now. So we can worship you, Father God, in, in spirit and in truth. Give us a listening ear to your word this moment. Because your word is a lamp on our feet and a light on our foot. Pathway. Your word, Father God, gives us strength and gives us wisdom. So, Father God, help us, Father God, to allow your word to sink deep into our hearts that we may not sin against you. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you are God that has forgiven us. So we ask this morning that you would search our hearts this morning. And whatever you find that hinders your complete control in our lives, whatever you find, Father God, that hinders us, Father God, from loving one another, from caring for one another, we ask you, Lord, to remove it right now. Give us our sin right now. Help us, Lord, to find our true self, which is loving you which is being guided by your Holy Spirit. So, Father God, we ask you, Lord, just to let us reflect on your loving kindness and your general mercy each and every day. Not only that, the Lord, but let us walk into each and every day with joy and peace and love in our hearts that we may love our fellow man. Father God, we ask you, Lord, to bless us upon our pastor this morning who will deliver the word. Thank you, Lord, just to keep him in your care. And your word will come forward bold and accurately. Your word, Father God, will lift our spirits. We ask a blessing upon each and every one that's in attendance this morning. We ask you, Lord, just to bless our homes. And bless them. Make them homes of love, peace, prayer, and long suffering. Father God, give us wisdom each day that we will go about our daily activities, loving one another, caring for one another, doing for one another that they cannot do for themselves. We thank you, Lord, for all you've done for us and all you will do for us. We thank you, Lord, for caring for those right now that are sick among us, those that are suffering, Father God, from all manner of sickness and illnesses. We ask you to strengthen them right now, encourage them right now, and provide them that healing touch right now. In the loving name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
verse of review. Say a word out of God's word in Psalm number 100. is 
called upon to join in blessing and thanking him. It has been suggested that this psalm is probably written to be chanted by procession as they approached and entered the temple. The psalmist begins by saying, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Then he says, serve the Lord with gladness. He goes on to say, come before his presence with singing or with a cry of joy. Know ye, know ye that the Lord is good. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Then in verse 4, he reminded the worshipers to enter into his courts with praise and thanksgiving. After reminding the worshipers about who God is, about what God has done, what they are because of God. Why should he have to remind them to give God praise? After talking about the goodness of God, the greatness of God, the mercies of God, and what God has done in their lives, he still says to them, come into his presence with thanksgiving. Why, why do we have to be reminded to come to worship with thanksgiving? But what the psalmist is saying is that thanksgiving is more than words that fall from our lips. Thanksgiving is an attitude. Yeah. It's, a, it's a person's mood. It's, it's a feeling. It's a frame of mind. It is a, a way of life. Thanksgiving is from within, without. In a very real sense, Thanksgiving is thanksgiving. So what the psalmist is saying is that Come before God, not just saying thank you from your lips, but come before God with thanksgiving as a, a way of life for you. Come before God with thanksgiving as a, a frame of mind. Come before God with an attitude of thanksgiving. Now, in order for us to come before God in thanksgiving, we must have that attitude of heart. But that attitude does not come natural. We must, we must cultivate that attitude of, of thanksgiving. We must work at it just as we work at any other attitude or any other frame of mind or any other way of life. We must work at thanksgiving as a, a way of life for us. It does not just come naturally. Well, how do we cultivate an attitude of thanksgiving? Number one, we must cease to look enviously at the good that others have that we don't have. It is easy, yes, to look out of the windows of our houses that the good, at the good that's going on in other folks' homes. So much so that we 
miss the good that God is doing in our own house. It is easy for us to look enviously at the good in, in other folks' marriage lives or single lives or widowed lives, so much so that we miss the good that God is doing in our own lives. And then we feel we don't have anything to be thankful for. We look at the good in other folks' finances and in other folks' children in such an envious way that we miss the good that God is doing in our own finances and in our own children. Some Christians even look endlessly at what God is doing in, in other churches. So much so that we miss the good that God is doing in our own church. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If we're going to cultivate an attitude of thanksgiving, we must cease to look enviously at the good God is doing in other folks' life and pay attention to what he is doing in our life. Yeah. Pay attention to what he's doing in our homes, in our families, in our children, in our spouses. Pay attention to the good he's doing in our churches and yeah. then oh, we yeah. can say thank you, Lord. Thank you. We must cease to look enviously at the good that others have. Oh, yeah. Next, we must remove the hindrances of regarding our ordinary mercies as something that just ought to be. You know, we can easily thank God for extraordinary mercies. We can thank Him, yes, for healing our bodies. Yeah. We can thank Him for saving us in situations where we know we should have died. We can thank Him for the miracles in our life, yeah. but, but we tend to see the ordinary mercies as something that just ought to be. We see hearing our children's voices and our spouse's voices and our parents' voices every morning as, as something that just ought to be. We see health and strength as something that that just ought to be, it just supposed to be. We see going to our good jobs as something that just ought to be. But if we're going to cultivate an attitude of thanksgiving, we must see God's mercies in the fact that, that our families wake up every day. Yeah. We must see God's mercies in the fact that that we have health and strength every day. We must see God's graces in the fact that, that we are able to get up every day. Yeah. We must see God's graces in the fact that we are able to dress ourselves every day. We have a tendency to look at the miracles in our lives and, and overlook the mercies in our lives. Yeah. But we must look at the small mercies. And when we look at the fact that God is good to us every day by waking us up and letting us get on our way. We will cultivate an attitude of thanksgiving. Two ladies are, are talking about their sons. One lady says her son is in college working on his doctor. The other lady says, well, you have much to be thankful for. My son is serving a 20-year term in prison. The lady whose son was in college looked at the other mother and says, you have something to be thankful for also. She said, what do you mean? I have something to be thankful for. 
My son is doing 20 years in prison. The other lady looked at him and said, yes, your son is not in college working on a doctorate. Your son is in prison serving 20 years. But you ought to be thankful for the fact that your son is yet alive. You ought to be thankful for the fact that God wakes your son up every morning. You ought to be thankful for the fact that God gives your son health and strength. You ought to be thankful for the fact that, that folks live good lives after prison. Yes, your son may not be in college right now, but you still have something to be thankful for. Call him and get an answer. You can write him and get a response. Yes, you got something. That mother was just looking at the son in college and said, you, you be thankful. The other mother said, be thankful for your son where he is because where there is life, there is hope. We're going to cultivate an attitude of thanksgiving. We must seek God's mercy in things that are not extraordinary. And then thirdly, we must make the best of our own misfortunes. We all have some misfortunes in life. Misfortunes involve mishaps and mischances and adversities. And these together mean that which goes wrong and sometimes gravely wrong. But yet we have to live with it. All of us have to live continuously with some things that went wrong in life. Have to live continuously with some bad decisions we made. We have to live continuously with some poor judgments we made. But we must make the best of it. And to make the best of it, we must accept the fact that it could be worse. Yeah. Stories told of a general that over a period of time he had lost a million soldiers in war. And that general had a hung down head saying, I've over a period of so many years, I've lost a million soldiers. But the preacher looked at him and said, be thankful. The general looked at the preacher and said, be thankful for what? The preacher said, be thankful because it could have been worse. And my brothers and sisters, whatever we are dealing with in life, it might well be bad, but it could be worse. It might well be tearing you apart, but if you think about it, it could be worse. It might well be keeping you up at night, but if you really think about it, and if you really look at life, it could be worse. So we're going to cultivate an attitude of thanksgiving. We must make the very best of our misfortune, yeah. understanding that whatever it is, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. it could be worse. When we cultivate this attitude of thanksgiving, we will not have to be told to come before the Lord with thanksgiving. It will be in our nature yeah. to express our thankfulness to God in word and in deed. Oh, yeah. Because thanksgiving is really thanks. Living. We will not only say thank you, but we will live thank you. We will not only say thank you, but we will show thank you. If we have an attitude of thanksgiving, it will be in our nature, and we will live thanksgiving every day of our lives. We will show it not by just talking. But we will show it by giving of our bread to the poor. Yes. We will show it by binding up somebody's wound. Yes. We will show it by, yes, by doing for others what Jesus has done for us. Yes. He has looked beyond our fault. Yes. And he has seen our need. When we have, yes, when we have an attitude of thanksgiving, we will look beyond the faults of others and we will see
Every day. 
far if you just tap your arm, they'll go to you. not a member of a church, and you feel the need to recommit your life to Christ and to one of his churches, just tap your horn. We have some people standing around that will go to you.
that you will strengthen them. We bring before you those that are standing in the need of prayer. Something in their lives is getting the best of them. Something in their lives have them on the verge of giving up. Something in their lives have them on the verge of throwing in the towel. They might well be like the psalmist that said, my feet had well nigh stiff, but help them to realize that you gone with all power. Help them to realize, Master, it's not about their weakness, but it's about your strength. Comfort them. Speak to their troubled hearts. Give them the strength to do what you know they need to do, that they might stand tall and strong in this difficult time in life. Help them to realize, Master, that you will never, ever leave them alone. It's in the powerful and loving name of Jesus, our Christ, we pray. And all the people of God said together,